I'm Yelena, I'm the founder of Noble. Uh, and before we get into the presentation, I wanted to uh, actually start out with some context on how Noble actually came to be. Uh, and in fact, some people in the audience will resonate with, with some of uh, what I'm about to share. Uh, so Noble was actually conceived initially in 2022 uh, after we had a very um, large scale event take place, which was actually um, UST and the Terra stable coin going to zero. And, and I know a lot of people here, especially being from Korea, uh, you know, kind of experienced this. And myself, who at the time was a core Cosmos uh, contributor, I and a couple of other people uh, were very much on the front lines of this of this event. Uh, Terra itself is a Cosmos project, and a lot of the activity and the mind share and, and the liquidity coming into the Cosmos ecosystem was a direct uh, kind of result of Terra and, and, and its success uh, at that time. And so myself and a couple of other people, we had this big kind of design kind of question in front of us, which is how do we bring native stable coins to Cosmos? Now that we no longer have a native stable coin, um, how do we bring those assets into the ecosystem in a way that is minimalistic, secure, stable, uh, you know, compliant, and, and so on and so forth? So that was really the question for, uh, that, that was presented to us and, and really uh, what resulted in, in what Noble is, is today. So very specific kind of uh, problem set to solve. Um, so Noble is a Cosmos chain. We are an application specific blockchain. And I like to say that we are the most application specific application specific blockchain uh, that, that currently exists in the sense that we are made for one application and, and that's digital asset issuance. And so this might seem counterintuitive, um, you know, as, as a goal, a lot of chains, uh, you know, uh, spin up and, and they have a lot of different applications, DeFi, trading, AMMs, um, you know, NFTs, so on and so forth. And so you might be thinking to yourself, well, why do you need one blockchain dedicated to this one specific application? And we'll, we'll go into details on why that makes sense. But the thing I want to kind of put forward here is that we serve this one purpose and this one purpose only. And so following uh, this problem set that we devised for ourselves back in 2022, we went to the whiteboard and eventually came up with the idea for Noble. And so Noble is a Cosmos chain. Uh, we are currently um, the issuance chain for USDC in the ecosystem. And so the numbers that you see in front of you today uh, are about uh, uh, six months of, of being live with native USDC in the Cosmos ecosystem. And we've issued uh, $205 million or so of native USDC. Uh, we have 37 uh, live IBC connections. So these are IBC connections to the rest of the Cosmos ecosystem, including Osmosis and DYDX and, and many others. And we work with three issuers, one of them, uh, of course, being USDC. Uh, and that is the only one currently live, although there is much more to come on that front. And so uh, in the six months that we've actually uh, been live with native USDC, we've been able to grow quite, quite quickly. And we'll talk a little bit more about why that is and, and how the noble kind of architecture has been designed to facilitate that, uh, you know, issuance and, and that high growth. But this just gives you here a quick um, overview and snapshot of sort of where Noble ranks in that list of, of USDC issuance. So, you know, we've been able to surpass sort of leading layer twos, layer ones, um, and, you know, cli climbing up the leaderboard, uh, so to speak. Um, and so why does this matter, right? Like, why does a specific chain dedicated to asset issuance uh, even matter? And, and that's because the world and the blockchain world, you know, specifically is, is going modular. So, this is a really nice ecosystem map that actually shows the different sort of projects that have their own specializations um, in terms of what they bring to the you know, modular kind of framework. You have obviously different settlement chains, you have different roll-up frameworks, you have things like execution being separated from consensus, you have things like data availability layers. And so as the world becomes more modular and you have all of these different projects sort of integrating and, and kind of working with each other, you actually uh, in, inadvertently need to become even more specialized in, in your in your domain. And so that's really sort of the thesis for, for Noble, which is being specialized to, just, to deliver this kind of asset issuance experience in a, in a very kind of concrete way. So I talked a lot about you know, the story so far of, of how we came to be, why we even decided to launch a chain in the first place, really uh, out, of, out of necessity. But at the end of the day, the thing that I want kind of the audience to take away uh, uh, for Noble is that Noble is UX. So 
In the Cosmos ecosystem, we have this framework for building blockchains where you know anyone can build and, and deploy an application-specific blockchain. Um, right now, we have about 80 about 80 plus uh, blockchains that are all sort of coexisting in the Cosmos ecosystem that all talk to each other uh, via IBC. And what Noble brought to the Cosmos ecosystem and what we're working to bring to, in fact, the larger kind of modular uh, ecosystem of projects that include things like rollups and, you know, more layer ones is this experience uh, of, of a monolithic sort of UX, right? So uh, a user experience that you would have on a chain like Solana or Ethereum, but in a modular context, in, in a modular uh, kind of uh, infrastructure context. And so that's what we've done for Cosmos. Um, so what you get with U USDC via Noble is uh, you know, your native asset on 80 plus blockchains at once, and you have this UX unlock of native USDC, which just like you would have in a monolithic context, it brings liquidity, efficient multi-chain routing to issuers, app chains, and end users. So Noble's uh, UX has made USDC the dominant stable coin in Cosmos. This is something we could have done for any, any stable coin. It just so happens that we were very privileged and, and grateful to be working with, obviously, uh, one of the most reputable um, and, and well-known stable coin issuers in the world, being Circle. And so, what we've done with our kind of design is we've actually facilitated this process where instead of actually keeping that liquidity, the, the, that kind of activity and, and those stable coins on our chain, we have every incentive to sort of export that asset to the rest of the Cosmos ecosystem where, you know, we have at this point uh, over 95% of the total UCC issued living on other Cosmos chains, chains like DYDX, Osmosis, Stargaze and, and others. And the reason that we like that is quite count, counterintuitive, right? Because typically when you're building a layer one or you're building a blockchain, you sort of want that activity to be on your chain. You want to have, you know, valuable applications. You want to retain users. You want to actually, you know, have that sort of live on your chain. You want, you want to create some sort of a, a garden, so to speak. Not so for Noble. For Noble, we see ourselves as uh, an exporter, as a router. We actually want to see that ratio of assets in versus out to be very, very high on the assets outside. Um, so that is why 95% of, of native UCC actually, again, lives off of Noble and is productive and used throughout the rest of the Cosmos ecosystem. So as more projects like DYDX decide to actually build a Cosmos chain, they have things like native UCC out of the box. The other stablecoin, because now we have uh, two native stablecoins, well, more than two, but for on these, call it more kind of centralized side of things, uh, the other native stablecoin would be USDT uh, via Kava. Um, and it's interesting to consider kind of the uh, con comparisons between Tether issued via Kava versus USDC issued via Noble, because even though Tether technically has a much larger you know, market cap, and then USDC at this point, they have had less traction and adoption in the Cosmos ecosystem, and only about $10 million uh, of native tether is sort of exported and, and used in the rest of the Cosmos ecosystem. And that actually comes back to that thesis um, that we originated with, which is how do you build a chain where counterintuitively you actually want to see your assets go off the chain, be proliferated natively throughout the rest of the ecosystem. Obviously, you, if you have a chain with DeFi applications and trading and things like this, you actually want to keep the liquidity on your chain. Not so for Noble. We, we are, again, serving one very specific purpose, and that's native asset issuance. So overall, in the last six months, Noble's USDC has actually had 20 times the ecosystem penetration uh, than Tether. And, and that's actually a very you know, significant metric if you think about um, kind of what we're trying to achieve. So Noble's uh, user experience, uh, so this idea of Noble UX, it's, it's led to this explosion of liquidity between Cosmos chains, uh, in which Noble has facilitated actually $1 billion of USDC transactions in the last 30 days. So this is a, a well-known uh, application or a well-known uh, website for people that are building in Cosmos. This is Map of Zones, and it actually demonstrates all of the connectivity between Noble and the rest of the Cosmos ecosystem. So you have all of these con uh, connections between these um, chains, which are IBC connections, and you can actually see the transaction volume and the USDC going from Noble to the rest of the ecosystem. So we have about uh, $1.1 billion of transacted value in the last 30 days, which is pretty, uh, pretty impressive. 
So I've talked a little bit about this idea that Noble is UX, and the thing that is unlocked when you have native USDC issued uh, with a chain like Noble is uh, obviously you know, efficient routing, efficient liquidity uh, connections to chains like, like Osmosis you know, and others. Um, but one of the cool things about Cosmos is actually the Cosmos SDK itself and the Cosmos stack. Um, so the nice thing uh, about the SDK is you can build these custom modules, which uh, even uh, improve the, the kind of offerings of the chain even more. And one of a, a very specific example is automated interchain accounts. Uh, we talked a little bit about this morning about account abstraction and you know chain abstraction and we, we talked a little bit about how those are two you know, different things. Um, we've had both, more so account abstraction in Cosmos for quite a long time. And, and one of those uh, kind of account abstraction um, tools is something like interchain accounts. And so uh, Noble being kind of UX and having this very singular mission to make uh, uh, stable coin uh, liquidity and proliferation as seamless as possible. Uh, one of the things that we actually built um, was automated interchain accounts. And this was actually something that was uh, kind of brought to us by a team uh, also uh, based in Korea called Crafton. So if you know uh, Crafton, they're a very well-known, uh, of course, Korean gaming development company, uh, the makers of PUBG, and they're actually building a Cosmos chain called Settleus. Uh, to do creator payouts in stable coins for, the, for their gamers and for their gaming developers. And so they needed a very seamless way, a very seamless workflow in one click to go from USDC on chain to someone's Stripe account or, or even you know, uh, kind of off chain in as seamless as of a, uh, a, a possible way. And so we built automated interchain accounts for them where this objective you know, is very simple, have users opt in automatically to forwarding their asset using an interchain account. So an inter interchain account is a way to actually um, have uh, a, an account perform certain actions on your behalf on a destination chain from what is called a controller chain. In this case, a controller chain would be Noble. Um, and so we went through this process of you know, figuring out how to scope this module in a way that would make sense for Crafton, which of course is um, you know, not necessarily a crypto native entity, but really wants to be kind of crypto native and, and, and leverage um, these assets. So I won't go into too much detail on the process um, since I see I'm, I'm running out of time, but uh, that was one kind of example of what Noble does to deliver a superior UX. So my presentation is called Bringing Real World Assets to Cosmos, and I haven't yet really talked about that because I did want to paint the vision and the landscape for how Noble is thinking about uh, blockchain development and how we specifically uh, decided to bring USDC to Cosmos. Um, but one, uh, another initiative that we're super, super excited about, so Noble is a generic asset issuance chain, which means we can bring stable coins like USDC to the ecosystem, but we can also really work with any asset issuer, including this uh, kind of evolving uh, category of real world assets. And so um, this project is called Project Halo. It's in, uh, it was in collaboration with a team called Hashnote. Um, and Hashnote is an asset issuer of, uh, of tokenized uh, treasury bills. Um, so they're currently live on Ethereum and will be expanding to Cosmos very soon. Um, so USYC, it's a first ever vehicle for short term uh, duration UST bills. Uh, pretty cool. You, you can do things like T plus zero, even T plus one settlement time. Uh, you, they're fully composable. They can be used in DeFi. And very importantly, they are regulated. And there is an entire kind of process to, to managing uh, kind of these tokenized T bills that an entity like uh, Hashnote specializes in. So Hashnote is the issuer, USYC is the asset, Noble is the blockchain that facilitates the issuance, and, and of course the infrastructure layer. Um, this is just a quick snapshot of where uh, Hashno kind of fits in to the larger evolving RWA tokenized treasuries uh, landscape. Um, it's not necessarily the most perfect matrix for you know, how to think about um, these assets, but it does give you a nice kind of uh, overview of different trade-offs, whether that's things like DeFi versus TradFi, things like actively manage versus passively manage. Uh, and you can see Hashnode here is on the regulated kind of more actively managed side of things. So within those contexts, within that context, we are looking to bring USYC on chain. So how does Noble work with an asset issuer? Well, I've talked about the process of working with Circle to bring native USDC to Cosmos. But uh, further to that, uh, really what we do is we build custom logic for the token throughout the cost Cosmos. 
thereby enabling things like better UX, so we talked a little bit about how an automated entertain account could help here, more efficient liquidity on ramps, we built something. We built uh, the cause of implementation for the cross-chain transfer protocol, which is a circle uh, bridge. There are things we could do in a similar fashion for other stable coins and real-world assets, and really uh, actually supporting an uh, app developer ecosystem for that leverages uh, noble issued assets. So a great example is uh, Cipher, which is a wallet um, that also has a debit card that you can actually spend uh, real stable coins, real USDC in stores where they merchant in this case doesn't actually know they're getting uh, stable coins and it just settles in USDC on the back end. So these are things we're really proud of. And really, it's a result of this custom kind of logic that we're uh, building. So in the case of USYC, um, really, it was, qu it was quite a straightforward exercise, like uh, when, when you think about it from the outset, um, but it gets more complicated as, as you get into the details. And the objective really is, is translate the EVM contract to the Cosmos SDK. Sounds simple enough. Uh, obviously, uh, it is not that simple. But really, the steps that we take is things like custom infrastructure, so permissioning, parameter authorities, really making sure that the Cosmos SDK is suited to the needs of the issuer, seamless integration uh, on the off-chain side of things with, uh, you know, uh, for example, for uh, on the hash note side, and really, and this is very, very important and very, very uh, key is one-to-one -one functionality. So anything to do with minting, burning, redeeming, authorities, so on and so forth, you need to really translate that one-to-one -one in the Cosmos context. Otherwise, um, things break down very quickly. One thing I didn't talk too much about and I'll mention now briefly is Noble uh, is not a bridge. So just to be very clear on, on that, we are a blockchain. We are a layer one. We integrate with the standards that are kind of most promising to us, uh, in this case, IBC, for the permissionless kind of communication. And so we really want to make sure that when we do have this one-to-one -one functionality from, let's say, the EVM side to the Cosmos side, we are recreating that unified experience, that unified kind of experience that you would get in a monolithic environment, but again, in a very sovereign kind of app chain way. So really, uh, we're bringing assets to Cosmos. What we want to do is we want to see uh, the ecosystem flourish. We want more users, more mindshare, more liquidity. So again, there's no monolithic architecture in Cosmos. There's no one central kind of base layer to deploy a smart contract and have that be equally available uh, you know, to all developers. We actually need a dedicated chain like Noble to be able to do that native asset issuance to bring those stable coins and RWAs to the ecosystem. And we need that stability, reliability, and neutrality. So we're stable in the sense that we are very careful. Uh, at any time we do an upgrade, we take our you know, precautions, we're reliable, we have a validator set right now that will eventually be transitioning to another shared security model, but that validator set was very, very carefully thought through, and we're neutral. And that's something I mentioned earlier, but we are not looking to reinvent the wheel. We are not looking to, you know, deploy every DeFi app, be, you know, the number one AMM in all of blockchains. We're very neutral in the sense that we like to work with um, stablecoin issuers, app chains, and developers to uh, create the most kind of meaningful user experience, um, you know, for all parties. We translate specifications into Cosmos standards. I talked a little bit about how we're doing that with interchain accounts for an, for a, 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 an entity like Crafton, um, and how we've done that with generally with the Cosmos SDK. And we're really focused on infrastructure integrations, compliance, and interoperability. Uh, these are obviously big words, and, and they mean many different things to many people. But for Noble, really what that means is being as embedded on the ground floor with the rest of the app chain and indeed involving roll-up ecosystem is really important to us. That deep, deep interoperability, that deep sort of standardization across the stack allows us to, you know, in six months, get to a point where we're doing $1.1 billion of UCC transaction volume in, the, in, in, in a month. So I'll leave you with this. Noble, it's an optimal UX. It's a Cosmos chain that has one very specific ap application. And ultimately, uh, we just want to see the ecosystem succeed uh, together. So thank you so much uh, for having me.